Just a uh, disappointing outcome, uh, good effort uh, by the Lumberjacks. I was proud of the way the guys played, uh, but left a lot of plays on the field and, and didn't execute at a level that, that we need to be executing at across the board. Uh, disappointing, let an opportunity like that to get away from us. Nice crowd, homecoming, a lot of people back, uh, Purple Haze. Every, everything was great. Everything was teed up, and it was a good football game, uh, but we ended up, you know, a few plays short, ended up, you know, losing by seven, and and had our opportunities to uh, to, to be on the other end of this thing, and, and we just didn't get it done. So that was uh, that was that was frustrating, you know. And and the guys were hurting, I'm, I was hurting, still hurting uh, on on that one because uh, it's tough. And and we've just had a a good little run of bad luck here right now, and got got the injury bug a little bit, and and execution bug a little bit, and 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 we're just not. Not getting the the close ones pulled out. That's the fourth fourth loss in five weeks. That you know by a score or less, and, you know one, whatever it is, two points, three points, six points, seven points feels like a hundred. You know when you lose, it just they all feel the same to me. And so uh, we've got to we got to find a way to uh, to pull those close ones out. And uh, I know we're a younger team, but that's that's not an excuse. You know, and and you know the bottom line, you got you got to get the job done. And so uh, we got. Got a week to uh, to do that. It's Jack's week this week, and so we're we're turning the focus on us and and as a staff, as a as a program, players uh, on the field, in the weight room, in the meeting room, on how we can get get better uh, this team right now because there's still three weeks of football left to play, and and we need to come out and and I think we've still got an opportunity to play our best football. If we do that, uh, we can get back on the winning side of things. You mentioned the younger side of the team. I didn't mention this on Thursday when we were talking about the bright spot. You had Aaron Austin with 10 tackles. You had Aaron Sears with 11 tackles, both freshmen, both leading that defensive front when it comes um, to the tackle formation. And Aaron has been a part of some Freshman of the Week awards, Jerry Weiss award, watch list. Um, talk about just that type of bright spot when it comes to the young guys that you have brought in that even though the outcomes aren't fully going your guys' way, there's still results that are coming in from your young group that you have brought in. Right. No, we've got a good program. We've got a good pipeline of high school kids coming in and, and a good mix of transfers. And, and, you know, unfortunately we did lose, you know, graduate some really talented players last year in a, in a, in a very good senior class. Went out as, you know, whack champions uh, last fall, knowing we would be turning it over a little bit and, and there would be some youth uh, that, that has to play, a little bit more youth than we wanted to is having to play because of injuries. And, and you know, our top three – you know, most productive, impactful players on defense are all on the shelf. You know, all three of those seniors, a couple of those guys lost for the year offensively. You know, we've, you know, got some – our our older guys are O-line, and they've been playing really well. But we've got two sophomore running backs, a freshman running back, a bunch of sophomore receivers, uh, breaking in a new quarterback. And so – so across the board, there's some learning curves, and that's on us as coaches. And and I'm not I'm not pointing the finger to that we're young. Uh, that, that's our job as coaches is to get young guys ready to play. Uh, but it has been fun. I mean, that is the silver lining of a of a gray cloud is to see. Oh my gosh, that that guy's a freshman. That guy's a, that guy's got three years left. I mean, there's a lot of production out there on the field right now that that we're playing close and and losing close games with a lot of production from a lot of guys with a lot of years left. And so uh, that that bodes well for the future of lumberjack football. But I care about here and now, and and the future of lumberjack football does not affect. The seniors that are that are playing here now, and I want to I want to go out and uh, and get a win, you know, whatever twelve days from now for those seniors. Then do it again the next week and win Senior Day, and then win the last one, and 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 get out of here uh, with, with a winning season. And so, uh, but to do that, we got to get better, and that's what we're going to focus on this week. Turn over to the media. On days like homecoming, especially like do you hear as a coach, like do you hear the crowd much, or do you just kind of tune it out and focus on? I don't think you do, you know, uh, occasionally on the big plays and, and turn over, you're like, oh my God, you know, it, it'll, it'll catch you, but you've got headsets on and you're so dialed in into the game. And I think, I think players are too, but, but they do notice it. I mean, I think when you're in the heat of the moment and, and, 
It's been a while since I played, but when you're on the field, you don't notice it, but you do when you're on the sideline. You know, so if you're a defensive player and we're on offense and we score a big touchdown, oh my gosh, listen to this place. And that that's where those fans make a difference. That's where we've been very, very successful uh, here at Homer Bryce through the years because of our, our fans and, and our Purple Haze and, and the support that this program has. And so uh, tip of the hat to, you know, everybody that, that came out and supported these guys. We got one more home game here in about three weeks. Hope they come out again. Because uh, these guys deserve it. They're great kids, and you know it was, it was an exciting football game. And and you know one thing I failed to mention earlier in the opening statements is credit to Abilene Christian. You know those guys are the ones that made the plays to to win the game, and their staff did a good job, and their players did. And and uh, so I think it's always important to, to give credit to the team that that, that gets gets you. We played sixty minutes, and then sixty minutes they had more points than we did. So credit the Wildcats. I know you've been big on onside kicks, and I wanted to ask you too about the one, you know, after your last touchdown. Like, what went into that decision making to call that onside kick? Yeah, that was not an onside kick. That was a that was a squib kick that we were trying to kick it down, and Deadburn hit the guy, and he caught it right there at the line of scrimmage. So we we, you know, that's that's a great point. We were very very poor. It's a nice way of saying it on kickoff coverage. We kick a ball out of bounds. We kick two of them right down the middle. They're they're ripping us. We you know our our kick coverage is it's a it's a play too. It's not just ten guys running down. Uh, there's scheme involved in that, and a lot of that scheme depends on the kick placement. We had not had good kick placement. We had not had good coverage, and so uh, we were in a in a situation there as to what to do. You know, we were either going to pooch it or. I wouldn't, we weren't going to kick it deep because it had been everywhere. I said, well, let's just squib it. You know, it was a hard squib, thinking it would go down into the corner and, and we'd get down there and tackle him on the 20, 25 yard line somewhere in there. And Dead Burn, he squibbed it and it went right, hit the guy right in the chest. And I still don't know if the guy knows he caught it, but he did <laughs> credit that guy because it was a heck of a catch on a, uh, on a squib kick. Yeah, for sure. And then leading to your bye week, like, how, do you plan to do anything? Like, what, you know, scout watch any other games? Or, like, how do you plan on spelling your bye week? Yeah, we, we call it a Jacks week because we're, we're going to focus on the Jacks this week. Uh, it's not a bye week. It's not a week off. Uh, we were, you know, same schedule, 6 a.m. this morning. Uh, guys were up and, and rolling, and, and we put last week's game to bed, been in the weight room, and and now we, uh, we turn our attention to the Jacks. We do not have an opponent. Uh, on Saturday, and so we've got a week's worth of work where we can get better. Uh, we're going to do some one-on-one -on -one stuff, some iron sharpens iron, and and get the ones better. Uh, but also work all the way down our depth chart, and and you know some of these guys that aren't playing that are twos and threes and fours, and getting them reps and getting them better and get better in the in the uh, in the weight room, bigger, faster, stronger. So these are good. These are great weeks if if you take advantage of them, if you treat them like a bye week, an off week, and take the week off, your program's not going to get any better. And so uh, we're excited to attack Jack's week and get the Jacks better, uh, ready to play Tarleton State here in about 12 days. Look, there's something else, but I can't remember. What <laughs> well, go enjoy Jack's week. Jarrell Wembley, 165 yeah. yards. That was a, you know, I think uh, something needs to be said. That was a career career night for him, and, and uh, he, he had some big-time runs. And uh, anytime you set a career high, I mean, he, he, gave, he laid it all on the line out there for those guys, but – uh, proud, proud of him. But just some untimely turnovers and, and uh, lack of execution on some big plays and cost us. But we're going, we're going to get better this week during Jack's weeks and, and Jack's week and and uh, be better, be better for it. Thanks for the time, Coach. Thank you, Axel. <laughs>